Hello everybody. I'm sure you're asking yourself a couple of questions right now. Firstly, why is my friend Rick Sully talking to me on Facebook? And secondly, what in the world is he talking about? Well, allow me to explain and hopefully answer your questions along the way. But before I start, I want to take a moment to wish you and your families very happy holidays. It's hard to believe that Christmas has already come and gone and we're ready to embark on the journey that is 2017. You know, the older I get, I start to realize that every day, week, month, and year flies by. And we learn to cherish the time that we have with our friends and family. So what I would like to do is get back to your questions. Why and what? So I'm at a point in my career where I've gathered a great deal of information about people selling and leadership, not necessarily in that order. So I thought I'd perhaps I would share some of my ideas, observations, and experiences with all of you. And maybe, just maybe, something that I say will have an impact, a positive impact, on you and your chosen field of endeavor. Now, my background has universally been spent in sales, sales management, leadership positions. But the principles that I'll be sharing today and in future talks can, and in most cases, will be applied to anybody from any walk of life. It applies to homemakers, teachers, lawyers, coaches, business owners, athletes, personal trainers, actors, well, you get the point. Anyone looking for an edge in their personal or professional lives will find value. Now, my messages will be designed to identify opportunities within your lives for personal growth, professional advancement, and maybe even some intellectual stimulation. Now, I know you don't normally associate intellectual stimulation with Rick Sully, but I hope to change that. And maybe somewhere along the line, you'll glean even a kernel of value in every single message. Now, my journey of personal growth begins today. Ultimately, I want to impact people's lives in a positive way, expand my circle of influence, and maybe, just maybe, leave my mark in the world. So, I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes discussing the importance of focusing all of your energy on the only things in which you can control. But first, I feel it's necessary to identify exactly what we can control. So I've taken the liberty of narrowing down that list to three things, three very specific things that we can control. That is your preparation, your effort, and your attitude. Or as I like to refer to it as your P. That's P-E-A. Now this is the foundation of everything I believe in. And you will hear me reference P, preparation, effort, and attitude throughout all of my future talks. I wholeheartedly believe the only three things a person truly has direct control over are their preparation in or about any given situation, the effort they choose to apply to a situation, and the attitude they choose to have. Now this may seem like a short list, especially when you compare it to all the things we can't control, which is literally everything else. But hopefully, the point of my message is beginning to hit home. We as human beings spend so much time worrying about things that we can't control or things that never happen. Imagine how much more productive we'd be or how much stress we could eliminate if we only focused on the big three of preparation, effort, and attitude. So now that I've identified these three critical areas, let's delve a little bit deeper into each one and see what they entail and how we can use these areas to create a better version of ourselves. So preparation. An individual is almost always in control of their preparation. How you prepare for a given situation will directly relate to your degree of success. If you are well prepared, you'll likely experience less surprises, less stress. You'll be able to overcome obstacles or objections more easily. And of course, you'll be able to apply the appropriate amount of intensity and focus required in that moment. Let's take an athlete, for example. Their preparation may include diet, fitness, reviewing scouting reports, additional practice sessions, and even visualization to program their subconscious mind. Now, the, 
The Roman philosopher Seneca once stated that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I mean, think about this. How many hours does an attorney prepare and rehearse their closing remarks prior to standing in front of a jury? An actor doesn't step on the stage without knowing their lines and blocking cold. A coach doesn't lead his team into the state championship game without hours of meticulous preparation. He must be certain that his players know every single play inside and out, every assignment, every opponent's tendency. This is the essence of preparation. You know, for those of you out there who like alliteration, or even know what alliteration is, you'll love this mantra. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. The one thing which preparation provides above everything else is confidence. And confidence drives success. And success can help lay the foundation for a life of happiness. So let's move on to effort. Every human being is 100% in control of their effort every single day in every undertaking. Effort may require getting up early, staying up late, consuming as much knowledge as humanly possible through reading self-help books, motivational books, using your drive time to listen to similar audiobooks, and of course, surrounding yourself and conversing with successful people every chance you have. It will also mean time away from your family, friends, and your home. We must all maximize our success time, which is the time of the day when we're actually doing our job. For an athlete, that's the time when he's on the field. A salesperson, that's the time when we're in front of a customer. You must eliminate distractions during this time. This includes unnecessary phone calls, texts, surfing the web, checking Facebook, listening to talk or sports radio, Use every minute of your success time to move the needle in your life. A big part of effort is setting goals. You can't measure effort unless you know exactly what you're working toward. Set daily goals, monthly goals, and long-term life goals. Now, your goals can be financial, health-related, professional, meritable, or maybe they can be tangible, such as a new boat, a dream house, or your retirement. Regardless of your goal, you must write it down. What I do is I'll print out a picture of what I want and I'll put it in my mirror, put it in my office, put it on my refrigerator, everywhere to constantly remind me what I'm striving toward. But once you know what that goal is, you must commit absolute effort to achieving it. You must stop and recognize when you achieve a goal. But when you miss a goal or you fall short, evaluate what you did wrong and make the changes so you can accomplish it next time. It's important to visualize your success. See yourself accomplishing your goal through a consistent and focused effort. As Winston Churchill once stated, continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. And in my mind, realizing your dreams. And finally, the A in P, which is attitude. Attitude is the linchpin for proper preparation and effort. You've likely heard the statement, attitude determines altitude. Well, I'm a firm believer in these words. When a person wakes up in the morning, they are likely to utter one of two things to themselves. Good morning, God, or good God, it's morning. Now you tell me which statement is likely to lead to a great productive and positive day. Starting your day with a proper attitude, a positive mental attitude, will give you more energy, patience, and determination. You'll be better able to roll with the punches that come your way throughout your day. I encourage all of you, actually I challenge all of you to read the book The Miracle Morning by Hal Alford. That's E-L-F-O-R-D. He talks about how critical the first hour of every day is to our success and well-being. That's your physical and mental well-being. He encourages us to use that time for self-reflection or mindfulness. But don't immediately grab your phone in the morning to check your email, your Facebook updates, or your sports scores. Maybe use that time for yoga, meditate, read, write in your journal, or just sit there and do nothing. This alone time will positively shift your mindset and will ensure that your day will start positively. Major League Baseball Hall of Famer Wade Boggs stated, A positive attitude causes a chain reaction of positive thoughts, events, and outcomes. It is a catalyst, and it sparks extraordinary results. Now, naturally, external factors can impact your preparation and effort and attitude. These include negative people, technology, 
bad weather, or past failures. But ultimately, it's you, the person in the mirror that controls the narrative. If it's meant to be, it's up to me is a great affirmation to repeat every day. Today is a new day, a day filled with hope and opportunity. Those of you who are flawlessly prepared, give maximum effort, and maintain a positive mental attitude will achieve personal, professional, and financial success beyond your wildest dreams. So focus on controlling your P. That's your preparation, your effort, and attitude, and your life will truly become extraordinary. Thank you all for your time, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Happy New Year, and be safe.